radiation, 34. I'm back again in the drug package, okay? And I'm re reminding you is number 35 is when you have lead print, when you have a radiation implanted, we already said strict isolation, distance we said, a special apron. If the radium comes out, never touch with the hand, use the long forceps and send it to the radiology department. Person must be on rest, why? Because if they're moving around, they may lose the radium. And a lot of time if they have cervical radiation, and you like them to stay in the bed and with the Foley catheter. So remember, bed rest is here, catheter is important, closing the door, and special precautions, and no pregnant person. And nurse must be rotated. You don't want to keep the same nurse every day because they will be exposed more with the radiation. Now, number 35, you guys all know TID word, AC word, and PC word, and any time they throw that, you should know. Number 36, injection. I won't read line to line, but injection, I am, you're giving, you're checking for blood. If blood is coming out, you cannot give that side because it's going more in the, in the circulation. I am means you're going in the muscle. Inject them. Vastus lateral is good. Needle size 20 to 25 gauge is okay. Number 37 is bronchodilator. <coughs> bronchodilator you're giving for patients who is having breathing problem. They can breathe well and breathing is the problem and bronchodilator. Now if you have two inhaler, a steroids and bronchodilator. How do you know you have steroids? Remember the last word, zone and salon. And which inhaler you will use first is bronchodilator, and then you use the steroids. You've got to open the lungs, and steroids is going to help in reducing inflammation. Everyone is okay? And I will be talking how to use inhaler. All your questions are not only knowing how, they will throw the wording patient is using and how would you correct and how would you know how we are using inhaler. But at this time, the inhalers are bronchodilator and there are a steroids when they have bad asthma, bad infection, they can give inhaler with the steroids, but which one do you inhale is bronchodilator, then you go for a steroids. Always wait a few minutes in between both the inhaler. Now, when we are using inhaler for your patient with breathing problem, there may be another question. You remember the word chest physiotherapy, and we use the word CPT. Now, if they ask you, the doctor has ordered MDI medicine, your inhaler, what do, medicine or dose inhaler, what do you do the first thing? First thing you give what before you use inhaler? Your CPT. P T. I want you, everyone, write it down. When patient has breathing problem, and I will be talking in respiratory, but the key answers are, is you give chest physiotherapy. And what is the word is called? CPT. Write down the word CPT. When you give CPT, when do you give CPT? Before you give bronchodilator. So maybe a question, you have a patient who has a lung problem and doctor has ordered meter dose inhaler and we use the word MDI, MDI, meter dose inhaler. And when we are using meter dose inhaler, what do you do before you give inhaler? Give the physiotherapy. Why do we give physiotherapy? To loosen up the secretion, maybe another answer. Before you give bronchodilator, what do you increase for your patient? Fluid. Fluid always loosen up the secretion. I want you to add CPT word and fluid. Always keep in simple question, but we don't think. We try to pick up more harder answer. But answer, maybe you give patient fluid, maybe give patient CPT before you're giving bronchodilator. And if you have steroid, then you give bronchodilator first, then you use the steroid inhaler. Next is 38. There are a lot of drugs on muscle relaxant. But what is muscle relaxant? One of them is flexural. And if they give you patient, doctor has ordered for a patient who has muscle problem, muscle stiffness, pain, muscle flexural, what, what does it help them to relieve the pain and improve 
What does it improve? Range of motion. Because patient is in pain. Patient muscles are very stiff. So after you give muscle relaxant, patient would be less in pain, muscles are more relaxed, and you can give what? Range of motion. So see how we connect the question. So whenever you are giving medication, it helps the patient to do something else. Next is thyroid hormone, Nine, 39. Which patient, what is the meaning thyroid hormone? Well, sometimes they don't give the wording question, the name of medication, like Synthroid. They didn't give you Synthroid, and they said, doctor has ordered thyroid hormone. Anytime thyroid hormone you're giving when you have low hormone. Remember? So which patient has low hormone? Hypothyroid. What is the other name for hypothyroid? It's called mixed edema. I want you to write down hypothyroid and remember the word mixed edema. What is hypo means? They don't have enough hormones, thyroid gland. So we have thyroid gland and patient has hypothyroid. How do you treat patient who has mixed edema or hypothyroid? We are giving them thyroid hormone. And one of the medication is called is Synthroid, very common drug. Everyone may be on Synthroid medication. And so the word is, they did not give, patient has, which patient are you going to give Synthroid? Number one, myxedema, hypothyroid, and number two, thyroidectomy. Maybe question, patient has thyroidectomy, and doctor has ordered thyroid hormone. So what is thyroid hormone? Is Synthroid. Everyone is all right. So which patient we are giving thyroid hormone? Those who are hypo and patient who have thyroidectomy. And what do you monitor when you're giving? So it's replacing. So remember, when you're giving hypo, they're turning into what now? Hyper. So what do you teach? Your questions are teaching question. Patient is going home after thyroidectomy and doctor has ordered thyroid hormones. What would you monitor or tell the patient? Underline the word tachycardia. Uh, underline the word chest pain. Tell the patient when they feel tachycardia. Another word I want you to add their palpitation. Another word I want nervousness. Patients start feeling nervous. Patient says, I cannot sleep and I'm having palpitation. That means they're turning into what? Hyperthyroid. What is the, the name of the disease for hyper? It's called Graves. Graves' disease. So remember, they will not use more hypohyper, myxedema, and Graves' disease. So question, patient is going home with thyroid hormone. What do you teach patient? What do you teach patient? To notify if they feel what? Chest pain, any palpitation, nervousness, tachycardia. Why? The hormones are too high. It's going up and they're turning into what? Hyperthyroid. Now what do you check? Some of your question. What do you check before you take Synthroid? I want you to add pulse rate. So what do you check every day when you're taking this pill? Check the pulse rate. What is the best time to take Synthroid is empty stomach and in the morning, we all should know. And it will never stop. Patient says, I feel good, and I can stop taking my Synthroid. Can they stop? No. They have to live with the Synthroid only. What do they do? Adjust the dose. If it goes high, they lower the dose. If it lower, they adjust the dose. And that is, would be your answers when they're turning very high. The, what, if the patient calls you and patient says, I'm feeling tachycardia, I cannot sleep in the night time and I'm taking my Synthroid. And what would you advise your patient? You're not going to say decrease the medication. There may be answer decrease the medication, but what we advise the patient? Call your doctor, make an appointment, and how do you adjust the dose? We don't adjust the dose on symptom. We got to do the blood test. And what are they going to look here? In thyroid level, TSH and T3 and T4. So we will talk a little later as I move on. But yes, Synthroid is given for which patient? For hypo and thyroidectomy. And what is Synthroid is called thyroid 
hormone. Lot of questions are, any book you will do, go on exam, cram, go on sounder, and the questions are same way, the wording. Patient is taking synthroid, a patient has given thyroid hormone. I want you to add their hyperthyroid medication. What is the drugs you give for hyperthyroid patients are, anybody remember the medication? PTU, anyone remember that medication is? Prothyrosil. Uh, we are missing there, so add the word is prothyrosil or PTU and tapazole. T-A-P-A-Z-O-L-E, PTU and tapazole for hyperthyroid patient. And also, after thyroidectomy, if they go in thyroid strong, in all exam, a lot of drug questions are there. So that's why I'm brushing up some of drugs that you guys would know. A patient has thyroidectomy, and patient is going in complication. You guys remember the word thyroid strong? Mm -hmm. And when patient goes in thyroid strong, what drug do you give? Same. Because what happened? The hormones, they turn into, turning into more hyper. So what is thyroid strong? They turn more hyper activity of the gland. So what drug do we give them? PTO and tapazole. Everyone is okay, thyroid medication, synthroid, tapazole, and PTO. Next is number four, decongestant. Over-the-counter medication, buying for cold. Maybe on your teaching question, what do you check the history? Blood pressure, because some of the drug can cause hypertension. So anybody who's buying or patient is buying, what maybe you will advise them, check with your physician if you have history of cardiac problem or hypertension. Next is pyridium. Pyridium is a urinary analgesic. When you have a lot of pain, burning sensation, pain, and what does it relieve? Pain, and it changes the color of the urine into the orange color. And that's normal because of the medication. Sulfanamides are also used for UTI. Any word with sulfur drug, sulfur are crystal, and you got to increase the fluid. So sulfanamides, remember any sulfur drug, back trim, and sulfur, and they will use the word patient is on sulfa medication or sulfanomides are. What is the sulfanomides are is causing sulfur drug and you want to increase the fluid. Anyway, for UTI, what do you increase? Fluid. When you're taking drugs, what are we increasing here? Fluid. So we've got to remember fluids is good for UTI, but mostly medication for pain is pyridium. Seizure medication, I talked about that earlier, dilantin, and side effect of dilantin is gum bleeding or hyperplasia of the gum. Do not stop again all of a sudden medication. A patient not taking medication will turn into what? Severe seizure. And what is when you stop taking medication? There is a word, it's called status epilepticus. What is status epilepticus? Long seizure. And patient will be seizing for a long time. That's why they shouldn't stop again. They will need the medication all the time. They got to check the dosage and their blood level. And the, what is the normal blood level is? 10 to 20. Tegriterol is also seizure medication. And you check for liver. Antibiotic, we, I talked about tetracycline earlier. And now uh, is flagell. Flagell is very common drug for patient with liver cirrhosis, patient with ulcer. They give to treat the ulcer and infection, and in cirrhosis patient. But very important that patient cannot take any alcohol when they're taking that flagell. If they're taking for two weeks, and one of the answer is, what do you tell the patient no alcohol during that whole course of flagell? So flagell is again antibiotic and we use for ulcer patients because ulcer is one of the reasons for ulcer is infection. Not all the time ulcer come because of food, but ulcer could be one reason. I will be talking about that H. pyloric infection. So you got to treat that infection by giving medication flagell. 
ampicillin, before you give any ampicillin, ampicillin, you check allergies, rashes, you must notify. Neupogen, everyone should know Neupogen and Apogen. Neupogen to increase white blood count when the white blood count is low. And Apogen, you are treating for increasing anemia. I want you to write down there for renal failure. Patient with renal failure, they're very anemic. Why? Your kidneys are producing the red blood cell and it's called erythropoietin. Now, a patient who has renal failure, patients who are going for dialysis, they're taking a lot of apogen. Why? Because they're very anemic. So very good drug, and we all should know, apogen is to treat anemia. And what lab do you do? Red blood cells, hemoglobin, maybe they will give, and increasing the red blood cells. Now, the next page, the last, is your hormones, estrogen or primarin, anyone is taking no smoking because it affects the cardiac. TB medication is INH, isonized, and the bacillus, everyone should know TB is caused by acid fast bacillus, and after you do the testing, and it comes the positive test. What isolation do we put the TB patient here? Is airborne, write down the word airborne. And what mask do we use here is particulate mask or N95 mask. That is a special mask you're using. Negative pressure, close the door. Door must be closed when you have airborne precaution. So I'm going over, and when you're taking your exam, be careful reading. You get PPD, patient turns to be positive. What would you do? You may not put them right away, how do you diagnose the TB confirmed? Not by PPD. How? No. Sputum. You cannot confirm. So in your question, yes, we do x-ray. You're right. We do x-ray. But what happened? X-ray shows patient has possible pneumonia. But what are we looking in x-ray? Only the picture. You can confirm the germs. So what do we have to do confirming the diagnosis? You've got to take the sputum. And sputum has to turn positive, then only your diagnosis is going to be patient is in TB. And what do we need to do as a nurse if a patient is with TB? What isolation you're going to put and notify where? Where do we notify any communicable disease? Public health department. Why? It's a public health problem. We are controlling throughout. And who will follow up? Patient is charged, patient is going home, but who will follow up? Public health department. Everyone is okay? In your question, when is your patient is positive with TB? Not after x-ray. Make sure when you confirm with what? A sputum test. And that patient is you're positive. But maybe patient has TB, what drug do you give for TB? INH, and how long do we give TB drugs? Long time, maybe nine months, maybe more, six to nine months, and if they have HIV along with that and the resistance is low and it's not, it's not there, maybe they may continue, but at least long treatment. Patient must know to follow up with their medication. Why I'm attaching some more extra question with you because remember this test is not directly the book test it's going to be critical thinking and they might give you the way that if you are reading read good and see what can you do your patient is with tb maybe your isolation question maybe a drug question yes we do ppd for patients to see but ppd positive means they have been exposed it doesn't mean they have the tb you do x-ray x-ray doesn't mean patient has a tb unless we do what a sputum exam the next one is cyclo medication or restasis for tear and also for the eye drops are. I want you to add in the last ACE inhibitor. ACE inhibitor are your prill. And when we are saying the word ACE inhibitor, that's your blood pressure medication. Ending word is prill. And prill are ACE inhibitor, and they use the word angio 
10 sin. So angiotensin are angiotensin are your ACE inhibitor. And what does they affect angiotensin? They're converting an ACE inhibitor. The last word is PRIL. There are a lot of side effects, but very important side effect is cough. I want you to write down cough. Patient complains, hacking cough, dry cough. That means you cannot continue with the PRIL group of medication. They have to give something else. For this test, yes, PRIL is what? ACE inhibitor. What do they convert here? Angiotensin work. Angiotensin conversion, and they're losing and dropping the blood pressure. What is the side effect here? Is sore throat. I want you to add fever, but first one is cough. Three is important, cough, sore throat, and fever. And when they may give you, patient is taking your blood pressure medication, cardiac medication, what do you teach? Remember, we are teaching the diet also. So what do you cut down when you have cardiac problem? The salt. And what would you teach the patient to get up slowly? And beta blockers is, remember, I said earlier, which is oral at the end. And what do you monitor for beta blocker? The pulse rate. So don't forget that, pulse rate and curl. So we have done pretty much a lot of drugs this, uh, until this time. And I will have you highlight a few more later, but not now because I covered a lot of here. And I don't want to duplicate because I want to cover more. As I move on, something I want. Uh, but don't lose this package. Please bring every day. But I will leave this, leave here. And now I want you to take, everybody has this cardiac picture. You should keep that. And I'm going to go on comprehensive review, where it says comprehensive. And this is combination of everything. A lot of things are in there and I will be talking about the cardiac. And in the cardiac, is first thing is, I wrote it down here, is the circulation. And if you can see from far, I'm going to talk about it. Now which side is deoxygenated blood we have? Deoxygenated blood is on the right side. What is deoxygenated? No oxygen. Mixed with that is more carbon dioxide. Any question? Deoxygenated is the first page on comprehensive. I'll be starting with the, in the, as you open with the cardiac, but you do have picture on page number three, four, or five, whatever in your, uh, this, this picture. But I just want to revise this. Many times they have given in test your circulation question. So I want everyone to know where is the circulation? Where is your deoxygenated blood? Right side. Where is your oxygenated blood? Is on the left side. So if you guys want to add it, write it. But you must know, you guys have done all these things. I'm just reviewing you. And I want definitely that you should know deoxygenated blood. Where does the blood come to? The right atrium. Right atrium, I wrote it down here, right side. Right side blood comes from where? Right superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Superior from the upper, inferior or lower part of deoxygenated blood comes to where? Right atrium. What is in the heart we have? Atrium and the ventricle. How many atriums we have two? How many ventricles we have two? The right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. So what blood do we have on the right side? Deoxygenated blood. How do we get circulation on the right side? Superior vena cava and inferior vena cava brings the blood from upper and lower to the right atrium. So we got the blood right atrium. Now blood has to go where? To the ventricle. So I wrote it down, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, the blood comes where? In the right atrium. And then how does the blood goes into the ventricle? 
we have the valves. And what is the valves, you guys remember? Tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve. And where are those two valves are? In between atrium and ventricle. So right side, what valve do we have? Tricuspid. The valve has to open so the blood is going where? Into the right ventricle. So, the, so you got to have, if they give you, can you explain right side of the circulation? Your answer would be, starting from superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, right atrium, you do not miss tricuspid valve, then the blood goes where? Into the right ventricle. After the right ventricle, the blood, what do we have in the right ventricle? Pulmonary artery. And what is pulmonary artery does? Take the blood towards the lungs. Are we clear? So what is pulmonary artery? Where is your pulmonary artery? In the right ventricle. Where is it? In the right ventricle. Now the blood is going towards the lungs. And what happened? After that, the blood comes as oxygenated blood. So what is left side? We have oxygenated blood. How do we receive oxygenated blood from pulmonary veins? Always remember, pulmonary artery <clears throat> taking away pulmonary veins, bringing it back to the left side of the heart. And then what happened here? The blood goes in the atrium. What is the valve we have on the left side? It's called mitral valve. Everyone must know vital, mitral valve. Why? because your questions can be rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic fever. What valve is affected in the heart with rheumatic fever is your answer, mitral valve. Are we clear? Everyone is okay. Where is the mitral valve? In the left side. Where is in the left side between the right, left atrium and left ventricle? It allows the blood to flow into the ventricle. And now ventricle has oxygenated blood. And what happened to the left ventricle? It blood goes into where? Is aorta. And in aorta also you have aortic semilunar valves. And that opens up and supply the blood throughout the body. So how do you get the blood through the aorta? And we are supplying throughout the Body. So everyone should know valves are very important. Now you remember in the heart, there are three layers in the heart. Pericardium, myocardium, and endocardium. What is pericardium? It's outside. Outside any infection come, you have pericardial friction rip. Why? Because the fluid collects around. Infection, if it comes, you can treat them. But which infection is the worst one in the cardiac is endocarditis. How you understand your question as you know your heart. Patient is admitted with endocarditis. What would be the problem with patient here? What is endocarditis? Your valves are damaged. Now what happens when the valves are damaged? The blood is not moving. And you are not getting blood throughout the body. So your questions are, patient is admitted with rheumatic fever. And I will talk about rheumatic fever is bad because rheumatic fever damages the heart. So that's why a lot of questions comes on rheumatic fever. So patient is admitted with rheumatic fever. What do you do as a nurse when patient has rheumatic fever? Your answer would be bed rest. Why? Because it's not ordinary fever. What is it damaging the fever? <coughs> damaging the heart. Another question. What part of the heart is damaged in rheumatic fever? Mitral valve. What do you do as a nurse? Bed rest. So everyone knows in your question, endocarditis means is what? The valves are damaged. Which side is your deoxygenated blood? Right side. Which side is oxygenated blood? It's on the left side. Where is the pulmonary artery? On the right ventricle. Where is the aorta? It's on the left ventricle. And where is, so how many valves do we have 
we have four valves in the heart. What are the two valves you have? AV valve. What is AV valves are? Tricuspid and bicuspid valve. And that is tricuspid on the right side. Bicuspid is your mitral on the left side. What are the two other valves we have? Semilunar valves. Whereas those two semilunar valves are pulmonary artery and iota. So your blood has to flow. What is the heart does? Heart is a pump, pumping the blood. And if you don't get the blood, what would happen to us? We won't be able to do any kind of activities. So what is the heart, I wrote it down here, is circulation, this. And when I will give a break, I'm not going to remove it. If somebody wants to come and write it down, that's fine. But next thing for your test is I want everyone to know the lung sounds, uh, the cardiac sounds are. Heart sounds are, love and dub sounds are. Cardiac sounds are, love dub sound. And what is S1 and S2 sounds? You guys have to add there, wherever you want to write it down. So, but you must know. And they are adding in the exam the sounds in your questions. And you have to hear the sound and you have to tell them. So remember, if they are saying cardiac sound you are hearing, what is S1? I wrote it down. Hard sounds are when your valves are closing. That's the heart sound. So what are the S1 sounds are? When your AV valve are closing. Everyone is okay? What is S1? I wrote it down S1 and add there AV valves. How many AV valves? We have two. Tricuspid and bicuspid. When they close, you hear S1 sound. That's normal. Are we clear? So what is normal in the heart sounds are lub-dub sound. What is the lub-dub sounds are S1, S2. What is S1? Closing of AV valves. What is S2? Closing of semilunar valves. Where are the semilunar valves? Pulmonary artery and iota. Everyone is okay? So I wrote it down here, AV valve, and I pointed here, tricuspid and bicuspid valve. Everyone is okay? What is S2 sound is? What is S2 sound is? Your semilunar valve when they're closing. So what is your heart sounds are normal? S1 and S2. What is S1? AV valves are closing. And what is S2? When your semilunar valves are closing. And what are these sounds are? These sounds are lub dub sound. Clear. You can hear them. And but if in your question you can't hear, that may be your S3 sound. I want you to write down S3 is not normal. You can't hear very clearly love word. You may hear dub, 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 not too clear voice. And which patient you will see as three when you have CHF, heart failure. That means patient has heart failure. S3 sound. S4, very feeble sound, maybe in coronary artery disease. So what is your heart normal sounds are? S1, S2. What is abnormal sounds are? S3, S4. What is S3 comes from which patient? CHM. S4 goes in coronary artery obstruction. That would be your S4 sounds. Everyone is okay? And that is called lumped up sound. So I will leave it here for a while till we take a little break and then you guys can look. But I want you now, if you look here, and if they throw this picture, at least you should be able to recognize, and you have written on the pages, I have taken from your HESI review book, and just to give you ideas, because a lot of questions are coming, a lot of pictures are coming in exam, and a lot of loved up sounds are coming in exam, but this pictures, and you do have explanation. So page number 105 has picture. If you turn around on the back side, and it starts dysarrhythmia, and if you go, it says selected dysarrhythmia on the other side, and it says number A, number B, and number C in dysarrhythmia. Keep moving, 
in the bottom, and they're talking about the figure, atrial fibrillation. Number B is atrial flutter. Number C, ventricular tachycardia. Everyone is okay? This is the pictures on one side. On the back side, it tells you what is picture one. So if you guys are looking, picture one, what is picture one is? is you will recognize and they might throw the picture and they may say what are these which is the worst one is on this d. which one is the one last one d what is d is ventricular fibrillation and where is ventricular fibrillation on the same where you have the picture it says on the bottom and when your patient has ventricular fibrillation it says nursing planning underneath. You will say start CPR. What do you do? Start CPR when your patient has ventricular. So remember, look this. Number C, you have more ventricular tachycardia going like this. Big ones. That is ventricular tachycardia. You got to give medication. On their top one, number A, you have atrial fib. Number B, you have atrial flutter. All of them, you got to either give them medication or you do the treatment cardioversion. What is cardioversion? Like defibrillator. Everyone is all right? But which is the bad one here? If they throw and say, what is the bad one here? Ventricle, number D, which is ventricular fibrillation. Any question come? Ventricular fibrillation, what do you start? CPR. What do you do? Defibrillator. So everyone keep this page. It's written in the back just for help you out, you guys, to know. Don't be surprised. You can see all kinds of questions. And if you do have, at least you have idea that you know what is the worst one here is ventricular fibrillation. Okay? Now I will move on a little bit before we take a break. At least let me start a few things. Is number one, CHF on where we open up and we go on med search section, cardiovascular. Only I talked about so far is the, your patient with a heart problem. I wrote it down here, cardiac pathophysiology. What is cardiac? Whenever the heart is failing, or you have myocardial, or you have CHF, what do you monitor patient for CHF here? is the cardiac output. And what do they say when you have patient MI? The output is reduced. What is the meaning cardiac output is reduced? There is a low cardiac flow. And when your heart is not pumping, what is less here is cardiac output. Everyone is okay? On this package, open the first page. First page, don't go anywhere. On this package we have, that's the heart, and I want you to start with page number right here. And it says, is here is the CHF. Are we okay? No, it's okay, it's 24. Okay, it's 24. Oh my gosh. CHF, in a few minutes I'll stop to take a break. But let me go ahead and talk about CHF. Everyone is okay, page 24? I'm so sorry, I have no clue that was on page 24, okay? And uh, so let's start with page 24, and uh, that is CHF. But everyone has CHF in your package, that's good. What is CHF is? Anytime. Now think about we are nurses. We have no uh, books with our hand, and you're admitting a patient. That is the point we got to start learning that we know patient is coming CHF. Now do you think we'll be having book and start looking what CHF, right side, left side? No. What is CHF? Congestive heart failure. What is heart is here? Failing. Pumping the blood. And what happened in CHF? Is heart is failing and what are you retaining? Fluid. Fluid. So I want you to underline that word, weight gain, and fluid retention, and tachycardia and tachypnea. I want you to add there, the pulse is high. Problem when you retain fluid, what is the problem when we retain fluid? You can breathe, right? You are retaining fluid, a lot of fluid is retention. Now what do you think? 
if we have CHF or any patient retaining fluid, what would you monitor for your patient? Number one. Now think about we have no books and we should know your question. So patient is coming with CHF. Patient has heart failure. Patient is retaining fluid. That is the one wording. What would you do immediately? Check the blood pressure, check the breathing, but what would you do? No water pitcher. Why? Because they have already a lot of fluid. What are you going to tell the CNA? No water pitcher. What are you going to teach CNA? Restrict fluid. You don't want to go. Go back in Pete's question. Baby has CHF. What do you do? Don't overfeed. Why? Feeding, you're putting more fluid. What do you monitor your patient here? Breathing problem. What do you monitor when you retain fluid? Edema, right? So I want you, it says weight, weigh the patient, and underneath it says right side, and I want you to highlight the word edema, highlight the word jugular vein, and weight gain. And what is, a, uh, is edema? Patient has CHF. What are we monitoring patient here? Retaining fluid. What are we moni monitoring in retention of fluid? Weight. Weight is very easy answer. Nowadays, they're removing weight, and they have more in your question. Assess the lungs. Why? When you have more fluid, your lungs are congested, and what are you listening in the lungs? Is crackles. Remember the word crackles? So what do we hear? The crackles. So everyone should be sure patient with CHF. Now I will go on right and left, but let's just remember, what is CHF? Weight gain. What patient is retaining here? Fluid. What do we need to cut down here? Your questions are going to be, what would you teach your CNA? What would you monitor? Restricted fluid. You can give more fluid. What are you assessing as a nurse? The weight and the lung sounds. Are we clear? What are we assessing here? Lung sound. When we are saying right side CHF, what is right side mean? Systemic, all over. What is left side means the lungs. So what is in the right side? If they say one question, patient has jugular vein. What kind of edema, what kind of CHF? Right side. When patient has dependent edema, and where it says edema, I want you to write down the word ascites. What is the word ascites? The fluid is in the stomach. They have a lot of fluid. What is in the stomach do we have? We got to learn to connection. Now some questions, they may not give ascites, they may not give jugular vein, and they say patient has edema, but what is in the stomach we have? Our liver and spleen. So what happened when you're over distended, your liver is getting bigger. And spleen, and what is the word is called? Hepatomegaly. And splenomegaly. So what is enlarged here? Hepatomegaly. They give patient has hepatomegaly, splenomegaly. It's not going to be your left side. It's going to be what is right side. When we say dependent edema, there is a difference between generalized and dependent edema. Generalized means all over. Dependent edema, because you have ascites all below the stomach, ankle, scrotal area, thighs, they will have swelling. Everyone is okay? Dependent, lower part, and that means because they have so much of fluid in the right, and a lot of right side heart failure, can lead to liver cirrhosis. Everyone is okay. Liver cirrhosis, one cause is what? Alcohol. Second cause is what? Right side heart failure. So everyone is okay. CHF is what? Is congestive heart failure. Heart is not pumping enough blood. Are we clear? What is the patient is retaining here? Is the fluid. Your answer is what? What are you monitoring patient with CHF? Fluid retention. What are you giving them? Restricting the fluid. They cannot breathe. Everyone, weight gain, tachycardia, tachypnea. 
Always keep in your mind. Right side, when they're going to ask you your question, you're going to look for neck, jugular vein, ascites work, dependent edema. What are you looking in the lungs or on the left side? Breathing problem. What is a breathing problem? You will say dyspnea, shortness of breath, natural dyspnea. They cannot breathe in the nighttime. Any breathing thing, simply for this test. If you don't remember a lot of things, everyone should know what is CHF? Weight gain. What are we restricting here? Fluid. What is the right side heart failure? Is systemic. What is the left side is here? The lungs. What is patient is gaining here? The weight. What are you going to cut down here? Is there fluid? Underline the word nocturia, left side respiratory problem, and they can lead to pulmonary edema. What is the sign of pulmonary edema? I want you to add there pink and frothy sputum. What do they have here? Pink and, you have to add in the left side, pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema, sign anytime in your question. Patient is having pink, frothy sputum, sign of pulmonary edema. It's bad. What do you do? Notify your RN, notify your physician. Next word, orthopenia word. What is the position orthopenic? Sitting and resting on the table. You will see a lot of patients with CHF, but very common patient with COPD. They cannot breathe. So what happens when you want to have them lay down? They can't lay down because they can breathe. So what do they want? They want to sit, and orthopenic position is what? When they're resting. And same you will go on patient orthopenia. I'll tell you, all exam, they're giving you position, position, position. They're throwing the picture. So remember, we must know, not only knowing just wording Fowler's position, we must know semi Fowler's, Fowler's, orthopenic position, when they're sitting, resting. And when do we use orthopenic position when you can breathe? So remember, you're going to need oxygen for this patient. You're going to, what do you cut down in the next line? Sodium and fluid, right down underneath fluid. And oxygen, raise the head of the bed. Digitalis, the dioxin they will need. Blood pressure medication if they need. But what is important here? Diuretics, right? What is important here to give? Diuretics. What is diuretics are? I said in the morning, chlorothiazide. Maybe LASIK. And what do you monitor when you're giving LASIK here? Potassium. What are we losing here? Potassium. So write down there. And when you lose fluid, what is the condition is called? Hypovolemia. What is hypovolemia means? You start losing fluid. And what do you monitor again? Is blood pressure. What happens when you lose more fluid? Dizziness. Why? Because you have orthostatic hypotension. I want you to remember two things. Any question? in your exam. Adema word, ascites word, what are you cutting down here? Sodium, what are you cutting down here? Water. What are you restricting here? Fluid. What are you going to maintain? Iron O. Strict iron O. Why? Because you got to document your iron O. And if doctor, let me give you another question. Doctor has ordered 1200 cc fluid. What does it mean? What is the meaning 1200 cc and how would you give as a nurse 1200 cc fluid? You have to give three shifts, everyone. That means 24 hours. Now if they ask you a question, how do you divide 1200 cc? You divide them in three shifts. Which one are you going to give more? Morning. Morning. Why? You have two meals. You have two med pass. Patient is more going around in the daytime. Evening will be lesser. Night you go more or less. Why? After night, most of the patient they are sleeping. Remember, and these are the questions you will see. And any question, they have already divided in your answer. Which one do you pick up? Wherever you see morning has more, lesser evening, and lesser, and your total comes what? 1200 cc. 
Now think about you become a nurse and you have a patient who has CHF and renal failure and doctor gave this and your INO, we are not paying attention and we are documenting every day 1600. This patient died with overload of fluid. Who would be responsible? Us. So who is responsible to do INO? Licensed person. Can CNA help you to tell you how much they're drinking and giving? Yes. Mm -hmm. But who is legally responsible to complete your INOs are your licensed person. And very important because there is a reason patient is going on a restrict fluid, liberal fluid, whatever your orders are, but you've got to remember two conditions in your exam and when you're working with your patient. Which are the patients with cut down fluid? Renal failure and CHF. Are we clear? So CHF is what? Weight gain, tachycardia, tachypenia, and patient has shortness of breath, patient has ascites, if they give you ascites, jugular vein, right side. Lung problem, left side. What are you assessing? The weight, and you're assessing, don't forget the lungs. When you have more fluid, your lungs are congested. Remember the wording hypervolemia and hypovolemia. When you're losing fluid, you're losing hypo. What happened when you're gaining fluid in CHF? What happened then? The blood pressure is going up, and that would be causing more hypertension. Let's take a break now for 10 minutes. I know I was going to stop. And I had